This is the second video of um, my attempt to create a missile command using Scratch. So let's talk about some of the things that we've got here. And I think the best place to start is with what I've called the missiles. These are the things that, um, the explosions basically, that are created when you fire at the, the baddies coming down. Okay, all three are, are pretty much the same. Um, so let's talk about what this one has and then I'll tell you what the differences are. This one says, well, I want to wait until a message comes in called fire-1. And when it gets that, it moves to the X and Y position of where the mouse is currently placed. Then it sets its size to half and it shows itself. Then it does two things. The first one makes it grow larger. That's this portion here. And then the second part makes it um, reduce in size again. So if we take that first loop, it does this 10 times. It waits 5 hundredths of a second. And then it changes its size by 10. I believe that's 10%. So I'll do that 10 times. So growing twice as large as what it started off as here. Then it goes back down to the way it began. Now the reason I did it like this is because I think it, it looks a lot less blocky when you start um, small and work your way up rather than the other way round. The very last thing it does is it adds the number one to a list called missiles and I'll come back to that in a minute. Let's look at missile two. Exactly the same except we're looking for fire-2 as a message and we're putting two on our list and then we have missile three. Exactly the same but we're using the threes. So if we move over to the crosshairs let's talk about how that works. Now I mentioned this idea of a list. Um, at the moment you can see the list up in the corner and it's actually empty. If I run this, just start it off, you can see that it populates it with the numbers 1, 2 and 3. Each of these numbers basically mean that um, that, that that particular missile is available to be fired. So that means that number 1 missile can be fired and number two and number three. There's a maximum of three the way I've written this. So if we go to the crosshair script uh, you can see that the first thing it does is it empties out that list. The reason for that is when Scratch starts it doesn't seem to reinitialize all its variables. So here in this loop what I'm doing is I'm saying well while there's something inside the list delete whatever's in the first position and just keep going until you can no longer find something in the list. Then add the number 1, 2 and 3 to the list. That's what you can see over here in this right hand corner. Then forever, move to where the mouse pointer is. That's a, a consequence of us creating crosshairs that follow the cursor in a previous blog entry. And then say, well, have they pushed the mouse button down? If they have, is the length of the missile list bigger than 0? This means that if you push the button down on the mouse it won't do anything unless there's actually something in the list meaning there are missiles available to be fired. Then we wait a quarter of a second and then we pull off the first item from the list and we store that in a variable called missile to fire. Then we delete it from the list. Finally we say um, if that missile to fire was number one then we tell the missile one to fire. If it was number two, we send the message to forcing the second sprite, missile dash two, to fire. And otherwise, we send missile three a message. And we just keep going like this, on and on and on. Okay, so let's have a look at it running. Let's click the start script. And if I push the mouse button, there's two things that should happen. Firstly, we should see the sprite appear. And then we should see number one be taken off of this list and then when the missile is finished exploding it should reappear back on the bottom of the list. If we go back over here, if you remember the very last thing it does once it's created it is it adds it back to the list here. So here we go, that's it firing, see how it was taken off. If I run it again, three's gone then gets added back on, then one gets taken off, remember it takes it from the top of the list then adds it to the end. Let's try running it a few more times. One, two, three. Do you see that brief glimpse of when it said it was empty? Now as soon as I do that, if you notice, it doesn't matter how many times I click, once I've got three on the screen, I can't make any more appear. And that's deliberate. Okay, this is just a brief intro of how this script works. If you go to my blog site, you can find um, a written description at the end of this video.